Come on, guys. What's up, Shay? What's up, Shay? Hey, did you get Bobby the uh, bobcat out yet? You know, Bobby has been laying low. Really? Long possibility he comes out tonight, though. <laughs> oh, boy. Look out, everybody. Bobby the bobcat. He's chomping at the bit for some action, though. <laughs> You know, training camp's tough, right? It's it is. It's serious business, All and it's uh, 24/7 no around. But once in a while, you got to lighten it up, right, Chris? You, you do. You do. You got to huh? have a sense of humor. All right. You want to talk about this guy when you first met him? Oh my God! Our hand security guy, Brad Schaefer. He has a sense of humor. Um, a lot of the time, the players just see the seriousness out of team security. We want to mix things up and let them show that, hey, we can have a little bit of fun too. We got a little Bluetooth speaker, hopped on YouTube there and found some big cat sounds. All right now. hour days. Listen, at the end of the day, everybody loves a good laugh, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Hey! Hey! <laughs> was at one time a real bobcat that went to taxidermist. It was stuffed, mounted, and it's even got the real dew claws in it. <laughs> Can I get my kitty cat back? <laughs> that thing is... How many people have you got? Beach has got a hit list, so blame him. Now, I was uh, paying attention to everything uh, training camp this weekend for the Chiefs, and one thing stuck out, jumped out like turkey. Are we in or are we out on the stash? Look, I'm in on it. I'm 100% in on it. Now that Travis has the mustache, I'm thinking about going full-time stash. <laughs> are we on TV all day today? I don't know. I'm about to say. If y'all want the ratings to go, just put us on TV all day. Damn, it's hot out here, boy. He talking about fast, I'm ready to go. Hey, hey yo, let's be great today. Attention to detail, especially your alignment. Wide house on three, one, two, three. <laughs> we got a lot of guys that's in that room that's doing a hell of a job. The thing that I'm looking at is, are we executing with great attention to details? Are we having a sense of urgency and a sense of purpose in what we're doing? <laughs> Here. Break it down right here. Oh. Um, so as some of these new receivers get more and more accustomed to the playbook, you can see that their talent show more and more. And I think we have a good group of guys that are smart and that have the physical ability to go up and make plays. <laughs> what do you think will that be? I gotta get how many too many moves? I thought it Yes, yeah, the ground was all good. We here. We enjoy. Yeah. We have some uh, intense battles, and we end up drawing a crowd. So we'll see. We'll see if we break the tie today or not. Yeah, we'll see. All right, let's do it. Bang. In the chess game, you're almost trying to play a move ahead and you're anticipating it's the same thing with football. Um, offenses and defenses, 
quarterbacks making checks on what he sees on the defense, the defense trying to have a reply to that, and it just ends up becoming a battle. Um, he's really good at chess. Nice. Oh, nice, nice, nice. This is turning into a complicated game. Yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> nice. But like, can you do that though? Okay, so that's the all put. So that's all passant. Yeah. Do you want to have that move back? No, I mean it's fine. I'm just I, that rule is still a little. Uh... My pawn is in a position that if he would have just moved this one space, I could take it. So you can't skip over that space and not allow me to still take it as if he only went one space. But I didn't know if this pawn blocked that. No, because these it just doesn't... take diagonal. Okay. Yeah. You can have it back. No, it's just about. We'll have practice, and then we have no time to rehab, and um, then we actually have lunch, and then so that, this is a good time afterwards to play after the meetings. And then we have 1.30 meetings, and then a walkthrough after that, and then lift, and then we have dinner, and then we have more meetings at night. So yeah, it's a pretty, pretty packed schedule, but you can find some time. Justin's uh, in a good position. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to apply some pressure but he's got his yeah, pawns working on me right now on the right side, and he, he opened up my king's defense. Great move. We're still fresh to each other, so. Yeah. I mean, once you get past the first five, six moves of the game, it just becomes, you know, just rapid fire, just whatever you can do to make to try and make some stuff happen. I'm trying to figure out why he just did that. Stop. Checkmate. Checkmate. Yeah. The there's, game. There's the game. There's a battle. Yeah. So it keeps it interesting. Yeah. What's going on there, George K? All good? All good. All good. Yeah. Yeah. I always have a panic wake up, probably like 6 a.m. So. Oh. All right, okay, I'm good. Never mind, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to sleep. <laughs> What's up, baby? Let's go, baby. How you doing? One more yeah, day. Have a day, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't kick my ass today in pass rush. One more, and then the off day, baby. Yes, Let's sir. Look, make it a good one, baby. <sighs> this offensive line last year was pretty damn good with a rookie center and a rookie right guard. <laughs> Now you get year two Creed, year two Trey Smith, year two in the system Orlando Brown Jr. Yeah, baby. You know Tooney's the one guy you don't have to worry about at all. I tell you, I'm coming back in my next life as an old line coach. Because I, I like working with the big dudes. Come on, baby. Woohoo! All right, Nick, tell your huddle that these first five are all third and two to three. That's the way to play. That's the way to play. Bro, do you ever get to where you're so hot out here that like you just dream about drinking water? Yes. Creed, do you ever get to the point where you're out here so long and you know if you drink too much water, you're going to throw up, so you just yeah. dream about Chugging water, oh, man. Water. Oh my god. Never practice. As soon as we get in the AC in the locker room. Oh. All right, we got Bill Snyder Pavilion here at Missouri Western State's Spratt Stadium. Bill Snyder, of course, the former head coach at Kansas State. And one of the guys, a former Kansas State Wildcat, Elijah Lee, getting his opportunity to play with the Chiefs. He also went to Blue Springs High School, too, so he's well acquainted with Kansas City. So far, so good for the Blue Springs Wildcat. He's fitting in with the ones as training camp continues here in St. Joe. Who's the fastest? Four. I'm about to go talk to him. I thought you was the fastest. I am. You running next to 16. He, he fast too? 11 beat you though. 
Hey, didn't beat nothing. He beat y'all. Okay. Love it. Oh, I beat both y'all? Yeah, you beat both of them. I heard. Four, four, Joe. Go, Ginger. I grew up in Kansas City and St. Joseph. Probably about my sophomore year of high school. Coach just simply told me, hey, my nephew's coming back. He's going to start at running back, and he'll probably start at linebacker. And those are the two positions I played. So I'm like, man, like, there's nothing left for me here. You know, we always talk about the tradition that we have here. That's something we talk about every day, all right? Sure. We have one of our own. Elijah here played at Blue Springs, part of two state championships, all right? He's a Blue Springs dude, and now he's playing for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, you sir. I told everybody it was my last day of school. Nobody understood what I was saying. But I told my mom, hey, it's time for me to get out of St. Joe. I'm coming to Kansas City. The first game of the year, we played St. Joe Central after our transfer. So for me, it was like, man, let's get this story rolling. Let's get this fairy tale going. You know, we got a long tradition of guys in either league, basketball, football. One of these is special. One of my good friends, Darius Shepard, we were in the same class. So in the same class, there was two of us that went on to play in the league. On the same team, there was four of us. So not many people can say they have four professional athletes on one team. I think this might have been my my rookie year jersey. It's the only red I had, so. Well, I'll take a Chiefs jersey. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> now I got a different kind of red, the home team. I could get you one. There we go. <laughs> These are our summer pictures for the senior class. 200 pounds soaking wet, probably with the chains on too. <laughs> this is probably one of the places I visit often. Turn my life for the better, you know. Being a sophomore and not having any idea if I was going to go to college to play sports versus whenever I got here, I started getting offers right after my junior season. This is where it took it to another level because we had summer attendance. It meant a lot to us and you could see the work paid off for itself. I was determined to be on this because whenever you get here and see your name and it's not up there, it's like, well, damn, was I really putting in the work? Was I focused? I come from a situation where you got to get it and it's either get eaten or eat. On that field, it's me or you. And I love my job. I got mouths to feed. I got family members I take care of. So by at all costs, you know, I, I got to get it however I can whether special teams, defense, however I can contribute. To be a big name, that's not ever been a priority to me. I'm excited to watch you guys this fall. This will be my first time being able to be back to watch you guys. Like I said the last time, do your 111th. If it's not your time, your time will come. Like if you don't got a scholarship right now, why not this year? Why not you? Because I'm sure everybody want to go to school and play. But at the same time, you can't go home and tell your mom or your dad, well, coach isn't playing me. Well, what are you doing for coach to put you in? A lot of people think it's about football, which it is at the end of the day, that's my job. That's what I love doing. But for me, it's an opportunity to lay my foundation, let kids know that look like me, that have been through things like me, that you can do this. It's not only sports you can make it in to do something like this. You could be a hometown kid and be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever you want to be at in life. It just takes a lot of perseverance. And you got to shrug away the nose and the negativity, and you got to stay positive. And I tell people, your mental has to be right, because your life goes where your mental goes. So whenever you're positive, positive things will come and things will fall into place. And I feel like this is all falling into place at the right time. He talked about tradition. He lived the tradition. He set the tradition. So he's talking about it, so it means something to him. It ain't every day Chiefs players aren't coming out talking to people. They don't got time for that. All right, this dude loves this program. So it's guys like this that we owe it to to make sure we're doing the right damn thing all the time, correct? Yes, sir. All right? Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, no hey, problem. why don't you get the break? Let's go. Let's go. Get up. Yeah. Hey, family on three. One, two, three. Family! After being fired by the Bears, Matt Nagy is back in KC as the quarterback coach. The last time Nagy was in KC, he was the OC in 2017 when Patrick Mahomes was a rookie quarterback backing up Alex Smith. If he's on it. All right, we're up. A lot of touchdowns today, fellas. Bushy, a lot of touchdowns, Bush. They brought back Eric Bieniemy and then just added yeah, Matt awesome. Nagy to it, which is yep. kind of incredible. It's really refreshing uh, for me 
formerly to be in this role, uh, to be in this room when I got started back in 2013. Coach Reed and I always joke about you're back in the weeds, right? You're back into uh, the X's and O's uh, from the quarterback position. Hey, you know what period this is? Down to the Hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 that's the DOD right there. Friendly, look at him, he's holding it. Nice shot, one five! You feel it, you got that walk. You were feeling it, huh? You were feeling it. I learned a lot, because you know, as a head coach, you just have so many different hats you gotta wear. Uh, you gotta be responsible for the different phases, offense, defense, special teams. You're in charge of everybody, you know, 200 people, and, and now we're down to three to four to five, and I kind of like that. It's, it's nice to be able to be back in that role, but it's also great to see familiar faces and get back with a lot of coaches I coached with before. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there have not been many days where you have not been fired up. You brought it, you're bringing it this year. You're fired up. You know, I had Patrick as a rookie. To see his immense growth in four to five years, it's powerful. Do you remember my first year when they said I did like five picks in the first practice? Yeah. I was out here with 10 to 10 first day and I did like five picks and they were like, Mahomes, oh, five picks, don't know if he's ready. Don't know if he's ready. You know, it, it's, it's a credit to all the coaches that have been here to and Coach Kafka and for Patrick and these other quarterbacks. It's been neat. So there, he's uh, he's helping me out. I'm hopefully helping him out a little bit and we put it all together. So you like this play? I love this play. I like that. You're good every down and distance or you just like first second? Every down and distance. Hey, he's feeling it right now. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. Uh-oh. 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 Oh! 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 Those are all DODs right there. Drop the right here. Right in the bread basket. Nice. Good job. Training camp's gonna go quick here, man, after this. We get this break. We got a few, few three days, days, three days, and then we, we take off to Chicago, yeah. It's a little faster this year than I've ever had before. This year? Why do you think? I think it's because I had to be really focused this year. I was trying to make sure I knew, everybody knew what to do with the receivers. Yeah, yeah. It kind of it kind of reshifts your focus, yeah. man. It resets you. Every front that you look at, these defensive linemen, I mean, these teams are stacking up. We understand that, um, you know, this offense has done so well, really since Coach Reed has been here, but but for Patrick to be doing what he's doing and putting up astronomical numbers with this offense, with Kels and, and the rest of the guys, um, that's what happens, that's natural. Teams go for you, so we just gotta keep it up, and as we know, Tyreek's not here anymore, so there's gonna be different roles for different players, but that's something that we look forward to. No one will care if you keep scoring touchdowns. It's the weekend. I got to get ready to, you know, do my football prep stuff. I got to get the the right shirt out, the right draws, you know, the the clothes. There you go. Well over halfway into training camp, and we're getting ready for the first preseason game of the year on Saturday. And the ones aren't going to play a whole lot, if at all. We'll find out from Andy later. As far as the game goes, try to get the young guys the majority of the reps as we go and make sure they get enough work. There's a balance there, letting the ones get a little bit of work, guys that are going to play in the game and still have the competition at certain positions, and then most of all, get the young guys a look. Is it a real Red Friday? Is this the official first Red Friday? Do we count preseason? The day before a game, which is tomorrow, first preseason game. So let's have a little fun here. Okay. So I'm curious for you, going back to your first preseason, any interesting stories or anything that you remember that was special about that occasion? I was just relishing in the moment of putting on an NFL jersey and an NFL uniform. You know, being where I always imagined myself as a, as a kid. That was probably more of anything for me. I remember the first game I played was uh, was in the Saints Dome. Rookie to rookie, Tyler Bray, the undrafted free agent, in third round side end out of Cincinnati. The first catch I got, man, I'll tell you what, man, I caught the ball and I blacked out. I don't even remember what happened. <laughs> <laughs> you dream your whole life putting on that NFL uniform and going out on the field, and you know you never forget that putting it on for the first time. Let's go. 
you're living your dreams and you're putting in, you know, everything that you've preached and everything that you wanted in life, you know, you put it out there on the field. It's a, it's a moment you don't forget, man. Or you do forget and you just wish you did. <laughs> hey, make the most out of today. Fly around, make plays all day long. When the ball comes your way, make a play. Hey, let's go out there and win a football game. Playmakers on three, one, two, three. Edge. It's a word that's all over the place in meaning and usage. This year, the Chiefs have adopted the word edge as their season battle cry. And we all know in the kingdom, the Chiefs have been the NFL's most successful team the past four seasons. And yet the NFL prognosticators are forecasting gloom and doom in 22 for the Chiefs kingdom. You can dislike the Chiefs. You can disrespect the Chiefs. You can doubt the Chiefs, but you're going to have to deal with the Chiefs, a team looking for an edge. Play action fake and the Bears blitz. And Mahomes reads it and finds Kelsey. Rush four, drops seven into coverage. Mahomes will step up, scrambles, fires late, caught by Valdez Scantling in a first down. The snack, boys. Second down, goal to go for the Chiefs at the five. Tight end screen, right side, touchdown. Kansas City, the bulldozer. Great mix of plays on that first drive for the Chiefs. Chad Henney will be out running the offense now. They're leaving the first offensive line along with them and the kind of backup wide receivers in at the moment. And he comes to the near side, Justin Watson. Get used to him now. This is a young man that played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers primarily as a special teams guy. Yeah, he's one of those guys that's the epitome of a number four or number five receiver that can contribute greatly on special teams. So another big body receiver for special teams menace for well, the Bucks making some plays here. Chiefs are in now the tempo. I caught Justin Watson first down. Needed three, he got four. Chiefs leading seven to nothing. They have second and ten at the Bear 28-yard line. Chiefs again, the spread set out of the shotgun. Bouchelle throws it to Gore. Gets up to the 22, gains six yards. The Chiefs will have to burn one of their three timeouts here. 26 seconds left, second quarter. Let's get the first down timeout. Yep, yep. Shane Bouchelle with third and four. Chiefs at the Bears, 22. Snap to the right hip of Bouchelle. Throw it for the end zone! Oh, he threw it. Yes! Ah! Pass is caught! Touchdown! Justin Watson, the ex-Tampa Bay Buccaneer on a deep post. Let's go! And Watson splits those safeties, secures the catch for his first touchdown in the preseason and in the Chiefs uniform. Oh, let's go, Jay! And Justin Reed is going to try the PAT, and it is awesome. This one, PAT, was beautiful. Eyes, your vision, your timing was perfect right there. You put it in a great spot, even if you get it, it's a touchdown. Hey, that's the way to be smart in two minutes. You got up, you got out of bounds. Everything was on time. It was sharp. Good work. Way to go, man. I took a bet. I took a bet. No. I took a bet. He owes me. I took a bet. Charity of my choice. He owes me. I took a bet. I took a bet. That's what I did. I got cover kick. Yeah, I was just glad to go out there and make some plays. You know, I said every time you put that Kansas City Chiefs jersey on, it matters. I got to cover kick. Whether it's at practice, a preseason game, regular season, playoffs. Like every time you have the Chiefs logo on, it matters. So I was just glad to go out there, you know, represent for this organization, stack another good day, heading into the regular season. Touchdown and a tackle. Go get you some water. Go get you some water. Stamp guy. Good call. Final score, Bears 19, Chiefs. 14. They will take on the Washington Commanders next Saturday in Kansas City, but before that, another week of work in St. Joseph. I think when you first get to training camp, it can be daunting looking at how many practices you have in front of you. For me, I just try to focus on the moment right in front of me. Just win this day, win this rep, win this set. We were talking about Justin Watson, though, because clearly he stood out, to say yeah. the least. 
in that preseason game. Justin so Watson is a natural receiver who already has the, the trust of Patrick Mahomes from their workouts down in Texas. So I, I think he's your ultimate utility guy. You got four guys that can flat out spin the ball. And so my mentality has just been, hey, every single time those guys throw a ball in my direction, I'm going to catch it. I'm going to find a way to get open. <laughs> Whether it's a pretty route or it's ugly, no matter what, at the end of it, I'm going to come down with the ball. And so I've been thankful that I've been able to do that a lot this camp. And the quarterbacks have just done a great job of putting balls in the right spot. Great job. Now here's the biggest thing is, you come across there, you get hit. So drive and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Come across there, you still don't get hit with a catch. That's what I mean. Get crazy. Either way, you're going to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> the roster is now at 87 players currently. They'll still need to get down to 85 by tomorrow. It's getting a little Curling nervous. At 87 players. So. The competition has been great, and there's going to be some players here that we're going to have to move on from just, just numbers-wise, and they're going to be playing for some other teams. The roster is getting smaller, and the pressure is kind of building up, so you kind of see who shines in those moments, and, and that's what's going to be the rest of the season. We're going to be in big games from week one through however long we can we can ride this thing out into the playoffs. Next week, 3 p.m. at Arrowhead as the Washington Commanders come to town. Looking forward to getting back to Arrowhead with you. Seeing what we have so far in this team, I know we have the pieces, but it's just about reaching that level every day in practice, every day that we're working. There's some guys here that know what it takes, and I'm excited to see us pushing each other to that limit. I want to help this team win a championship.